In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the demo project and which elements you'll need to build a track. Be sure to download all of the tools that are in the demo project. You can do so via the UGEM app. If you need help with the installation, click on the info icon in the top right corner. All you need to download is the latest Usynth Title Deluxe, Beatmaker Candy, GrooveMate 1, and Finisher Retro for effects. You'll also need a license or a free trial of FL Studio 20. No other external third-party plugin is needed here. If you're downloading these plugins for the first time, you'll be able to use them for 30 days within the free trial with absolutely no restrictions. Once you have installed everything and opened your DAW for the first time, you will need to make sure that all UGEM plugins are listed and registered with the plugin manager of your DAW. If you don't do this, they won't show up in your DAW and you will not be able to find them. Open up the plugin manager and click on Rescan. This way FL Studio will search your computer for freshly installed plugins. If you have any trouble with this step, please take a look at the description. Now open the demo project and you'll see that all the tools are already set up. Take a listen to the song, get inspired, and feel free to change sounds to your liking. There are many ways to start your song. Some producers prefer to start with a melody, and others like to start with a drum beat first. In general, you can remember that a song should include a combination of chords, melody, bass, and drums. Feel free to change the track to your liking, for example, by removing or adding additional patterns. Also take a look at the instruments that are used in the channel rack. You can experiment with changing existing presets or even MIDI notes in the piano roll to achieve a whole new sound in seconds. When you change or select a different style, it will load with new MIDI rhythms. The drum kit and mix settings will not change. This way, you can change the playing style without changing the actual sound of the drums. In the channel rack, you can add more instruments and sounds to your existing loop. Either click on the plus sign to add a new plugin, or duplicate an existing instrument to create a new instance. If you want to create your own beat, use the one shots in the range between C3 and C5. Otherwise, to access the pre-made beats, you only need to add single notes from the range C5 to B6. If you want to learn more about the UGEM plugins in detail, click now in the top right corner. Please have a look at the used effects in the mixing page of the demo project to get inspired. When it comes to mixing, you have to route each channel from the channel rack into your mixer first to receive a signal. For that, you need to left click on this empty box and drag your mouse up to select a free spot in your mixer. For organization reasons, I use the inserts 1 through 10 for harmonic sounds like synth, guitar, bass, vocals, and the inserts 10 to 20 for drum and effects sounds. There's no wrong or right answer here. Just make sure you have a good overview. Renaming and recoloring can be very helpful at this point. Easily bypass the effects with the green button on the right side so you can hear the difference between the dry and wet signal. When it comes to mastering, the goal is to boost volume and clear up the current mix with additional equalizers, maximizers, limiters, and compressors. As these effects can be annoyingly complicated, we made a fail-proof party mode for you. Try the Vintage Compression preset of Finisher Retro. When
When you are happy with the master and you want to export the project to audio, you will notice some variable settings. As a standard export format, we always recommend exporting as WAV file, as it's a standard and the best uncompressed format. Now you can give that baby a name and your track is done, mixed and mastered. If you want to release your music on streaming services, make sure to check the audio guidelines first before uploading so that you will meet these settings for the best results. This is pretty much everything you need to know to get your music production up and running with UGM Instruments. Please let us know in the comments if this was helpful to you and which DAWs we should cover with a demo next.